Hey there, Yogi. My name is Crystal Gray. I lead yoga teacher trainings as well as retreats, and I'm the creator of the Yoga Goddess Academy. In today's practice, I'll be leading you through a flow that is short but very to the point. Trust me, I did this flow yesterday. Even though it's short, I'm actually pretty sore today. So not to scare you, but you'll definitely get a great workout and get some great toning and lengthening of the muscles in the lower body and especially the booty. So please enjoy this practice and let me know in the comments how you fell afterward, I'd love to hear. Namaste. Start up at the front of your mat in Tadasana or Standing Mountain Pose. Bring your big toes together to touch or separate your feet about one to two inches. Ground down into all four corners of the feet. Squeeze the quads so you don't hyperextend or lock the knees. Neutral pelvis, so front hip bones level to the back hip bones and reach the back of the crown of the head up towards the sky, lengthening the spine. Find your gazing point or drishti. This helps you to focus. And then start to bring your attention to the breath. As you inhale, draw the lower belly gently in and up. Expand the low ribs, mid ribs, all the way up to the collarbones and upper back. Exhale, upper back, mid ribs, low ribs, belly. Repeat that. Letting the breath slow down. Connecting to the breath helps you also focus on the present moment and calm the mind. Breathing in and out through the nose. Use your ujjayi breath if you're familiar with that, valving the back of the throat, making that sound. One more thing to help you keep present. Now as you exhale, ground down. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead, wrap the shoulders, palms touch. Exhale, bring the hips back. Sitting into chair or utkatasana, make sure you can see your toes and your ankles. Navel the spine, lengthen the tailbone down so you're not arching the back. Now inhale, rise up, reach. Exhale, fold, bending the knees as far as just as much as you need to in order to tilt the pelvis. Inhale, come up to your monkey pose, flat back, hands on the shins or the ground, wherever you can go to get a flat back. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to plank, top of a push-up. Inhale, push forward so the shoulders are past the wrists. Exhale, lower down with the knees down or not, but the chest needs to land first, whatever way you choose. Uncurl the toes. Inhale, chest forward and up into cobra or bhujangasana, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, lower down. Curl the toes under, now push up in a straight line, either to the knees or straight up to plank. Inhale up, exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Let the head hang loose. Bend the knees a little bit so that you can lift the tailbone or point the tailbone more up. Push into the knuckles. You wanna to try to be in a straight line from the wrists all the way up to the hips. Now, bend the knees, inhale, look forward. At the end of the exhale, bring the right foot through, however you can get it there, low lunge. Scoot the back foot back so that the heel is directly above the toes. Ground down into the base of the front big toe and rise up to Crescent Warrior. Bend the back knee. You want the front knee directly on top of the ankle. Back knee is bent towards 90 degrees. Lengthen the tailbone down. Arms up, wrap the shoulders, palms touch. Let the shoulders relax away from the ears. Weights directly in between both feet. You can stay there with the arms or bring the hands to the heart. Hold here. Notice how strong you're feeling in the lower body. Or know and have faith that you're getting stronger. All right, now we're going to do some little pulses. So arms up or hands to the heart. Going to pulse it down and up. Don't go to where it hurts the knee, okay? So inhale down, exhale up. They don't have to be big pulses at all. Three, four, five. Bend into your crescent again, lean forward, put all the weight into your front foot, and then slowly lift the back leg up, coming into warrior three. Back toes are pointing down, so we're not opening the hips. Hips are square. You're in a straight line from the heel to the crown of the head. Again, hands can be at the heart or overhead to make it a little bit harder. Coming down only as far as you can go, staying in a straight line and not going past parallel to the ground with the torso and the lifted leg. This is Virabhadrasana 3. Now stay here or add on. Bend the right knee. We're going to pulse it down and up. Five. 
four, inhale down, exhale up, three, two, one, bend the knee, come back to your crescent warrior with control, <laughs> might not be pretty yet, inhale, arms up, palms touch, exhale, downward facing dog, walk it out, shift the hips from side to side, all right, bend the knees, inhale, look forward at the end of the exhale, however you can get it there, left foot through, low lunge, scoot the back foot back so the heels above the toes, get your balance and rise up, bend the back knee, bend the front knee, both knees towards 90 degrees, arms can come overhead, wrap the shoulders, palms touch, or hands to the heart to make it a little bit more gentle. Breathe. Okay, now let's pulse. Inhale down, exhale up. Pay attention to your knee. Inhale down, exhale up. In yoga, we never push through any pain or any signals the body's giving you. Two more. Bend the knee, hands can stay overhead or to the heart, lean forward, put all the weight in the front foot, and warrior three. Back toes pointing down, front leg straight but not locked, so squeeze the quad. Bend the front knee and pulse it down and up, five. Inhale down, exhale up, four, three, two, one, bend the knee and bring the back foot back, crescent warrior, inhale, arms up, palms touch, exhale, downward facing dog, walk it out, shift the hips, and inhale, come forward to plank, shoulders past the wrists, exhale, lower with or without the knees, chest lands first, uncurl the toes, inhale, chest forward and up, cobra, exhale, come down, curl the toes under, inhale, push up. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Again, bend the knees so you can tilt the pelvis forward and get the spine nice and long and straight. Roll the shoulders away from each other and roll the forearms in, knuckles heavy. All right, bend the knees, inhale, look forward at the end of the exhale, right foot through, low lunge, flatten the back foot, get your balance, and windmill the arms up into warrior two. Right heel in line with the arch of the back foot, turn the back toes in slightly, level out the pelvis, lengthen the spine, and gaze out through the right middle finger. Right knee should be right above the ankle or behind, but not past. Draw the lower belly gently in and up. As you inhale, expand in all directions. As you exhale, soften into the pose. Go a little bit further if possible and really feel the legs getting stronger. You might feel them shaking a little bit. Make sure the knee doesn't go past the ankle and you're not feeling strain. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, windmill the hands on either side of the right foot, downward facing dog. <sighs> Full stretch, bend the knees. Inhale, look forward. At the end of the exhale, left foot through, low lunge, flatten the back foot, windmill the arms up, warrior two. Left heel in line with the arch of the back foot. Breathe. Level out the pelvis, draw the lower belly gently in and up. Left knee directly on top of the ankle, not turning in or past. Go a little bit further if possible. If you're not near like 80, 90%, then you can go a little bit further. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, windmill the hands down on either side of the left foot, downward facing dog. Full stretch, inhale, come forward to plank. Exhale, lower, arms rub on the sides on the way down, uncurl the toes. Inhale, chest forward and up, cobra. Exhale, down. Curl the toes under. Inhale, push up. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. <sighs> 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 
Breathe here, roll the shoulders away from each other, roll the forearms in. And come down to the hands and knees. All right, now uncurl the toes, sit back onto the heels, and you can watch me for a moment. The next thing we're gonna do is come onto the hands and knees, just watch me first, okay? Then we'll lift one leg up, foot is active, and then we'll just pulse, little tiny pulses. We're gonna do 20 pulses on each side, okay? So come onto your hands and knees, wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Now bring the left knee to center and lift the right leg up. So the knee's bent towards 90 degrees, the upper leg is parallel to the ground, flex the foot. And we're gonna pulse it up, little pulses, 20, 19, 18, 17, breathe. 13, 12, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release. Switch it out, so right knee to center, lift the left. Keep the hips square, pulse it, 20, 19. Breathe, 10. Four, three, two, one. Release. Downward facing dog. Bring the big toes together to touch. Lift the right leg up. Bend the knee. Open the hips. Only if this feels good. You don't have to lift the leg. All right. Now, bend the knee. Look forward. Inhale. Push back. Exhale. Right knee to the outside of the right wrist. Foot swings over to the left for pigeon pose. Now, you do not want to grab the foot and yank it up. It doesn't matter if the shin is parallel to the front of the mat. Okay, that's a common misconception. Now, curl the back toes under and you can walk. Bring the front knee back if you need to feel more sensation. If you don't, then stay right there. Back leg is parallel to the long edge of the mat. You can uncurl the toes. Keep the hips square so don't fall off to the side. Keep them square. Hold here and breathe. If you need to feel more, you can come to, onto your forearms onto blocks or onto the mat. Again, keeping the hips square, not dumping off to either side. If your forehead can rest on something, that's a little bit more relaxing. Let the face relax, the forehead and the jaw, the eyes. You can close the eyes. Try to let go of any gripping in the glutes and the hips. So stretching out the glute, glutes and the hips and the back hip flexor. And then slowly come up. Now, we want to stretch the back quad as well. If you already feel a sensation in the stretch here in the back quad, then just stay here. Otherwise, very, very slowly start to lift the back foot slow. Just go to where you need to go to feel sensation. If it's part of your practice to reach back and grab the ankle, you can do that, but keep the hips square towards the front or the shoulders square towards the front rather. It's not about getting as far as you can into the pose. It's about feeling sensation and stretching, doing these counter poses. From here, curl the back toes under and lift the same leg up and back, three-legged down dog. If this feels good for you and just move it around, releasing the leg from the pose. All right, now, both feet down, inhale, left leg up. Exhale, bring the left knee to the outside of the left wrist. Foot swings over to the right side. Again, do not grab the foot and yank it over. You can curl the back toes under and then walk it back a little bit to feel more sensation. Uncurl the back toes, back leg is parallel to the long side of the mat. Toes pointing back, hips are square. Stay here or forearms onto blocks or the ground. You can stack the fists and place your forehead onto the top fist. If you did this last time, just switch the fist that's on top. Relax the face, relax the jaw. And then slowly come up onto the hands. Now, if, again, if you're feeling a stretch in the back quad, stay here. Otherwise, bend the back knee, lift the foot. Keep the shoulders square towards the front. You could grab the ankle if that's part of your practice. Again, just trying to feel sensation, not go super far in this. All 
and then release three-legged dog lift your left leg up move it around and then come to the hands and knees swing your feet around and come to seated both legs out in front come to dandasana seated staff so legs are at feet are active push into the heels and the balls of both feet pull the flesh back away from the sitting bones now if this is hard for you to keep a neutral pelvis with your front hip bones level to the back hip bones like if your tailbone keeps tucking under bend the knees then you should be able to bring it more into neutral reach the back of the crown of the head up towards the sky now do a big shoulder roll inhale lengthen exhale tilt the pelvis forward so keep the knees bent for now. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, tilt the pelvis forward. Now you should be in a straight line from the hips and the tailbone, the sacrum, all the way up to the crown of the head. We don't want to round and bring the head down to the knees. Even though I know that's probably what you want to do. Reach the chest forward and up. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Now if you can keep your torso exactly like this without letting it round, then you can straighten the legs. Relax the face, you can close the eyes. Pashimottanasana. And then slowly come up, cross your legs, coming into Sukhasana, easy seated pose, pull the flesh away from the sitting bones, big shoulder roll, lengthen the back of the crown of the head up towards the sky, and have your palms open or your hands open on your knees, close your eyes. Just come to your breath here. Compare how you're feeling now to when you first sat down on your mat or when you first stepped onto your mat with me today. Compare how you're breathing, how your body is feeling, your mind and your emotions. And circle your hands together in front of your heart into prayer, having your thumbs gently touch your heart center. We'll close our practice and our time together with one ohm, but after this ohm, I highly encourage you to lay back flat onto your back on your mat and take a five to 15 minute Shavasana. But for now, let's close with one ohm. Take a deep breath in. Ah. Bow your head, bring your thumbs from your heart center up to your third eye, acknowledging the energy that's within you, around you, connects us all together and never goes away. That energy within me acknowledges the energy within you, and I thank you so much for letting me guide you through your practice today. Namaste. Namaste.